It turned out that Apple did shoot their latest event, Scary Fast, with the iPhone 15 Pro Max, which is shooting me right now as well. So let's have a look at the backstage and see how they managed to do this. Let's go! What's good guys? Yesterday I did watch the Creator movie, which was shot on the Sony FX3, a $4000 camera, and it got me thinking that in 2023 the camera is not that important as lighting, VFX, um, plot and all that. So that made me do this video because Apple did a great job shooting their events on the iPhone 15 Pro Max in Apple Log. So let's get to the backstage. So here's the first shot guys behind the scenes of Apple events shot on the iPhone and here we can see a huge gimbal or a stabilizer and the iPhone 15 Pro Max in a beast grip cage. Here it is, the beast grip cage but without any additional lenses. So no external lenses, only the One X camera with the biggest sensor and they are using of course the USB Type-C to feed the video signal, to charge it simultaneously and all that. So let's go to the next shot and here we can see the Beast Grip cage from the side and they are using the Blackmagic camera app. This is a free app and I'm using it right now as well. I can monitor myself through this little HDMI monitor and I can see what I'm recording and that I am recording basically which is great. So the Blackmagic camera app, thumbs up, great app for free. So here we can see a techno crane, a huge one, it's an overkill for an iPhone, but still they're using this one. We have a teleprompter right here for Tim Cook to read the script, not to memorize it. Here we have the video transmission signal, um, kind of village, if you will, and we have four airy sky panels right here and one more huge light above Tim Cook. It's an overkill once again, but it's used to make the shot look as bright as possible using the lowest ISO setting, which is 55, and I'm using it right now as well. But my key light is obviously really close to me. So here they have the AJA kind of dock station, and it converts the signal into SDI and sends it to Video Village. Here we have the small rig uh, SSD holder and also the Tentacle Sync timecode device. So they are using timecode because I think they were using different iPhone mm, samples, I, iPhone items, iPhone phones, if you will. So yeah, they're using the timecode in here and it's all mounted to DJI Ronin Mark II. So let's get to the next shot, just a better view of this whole gimbal situation. And here we have a huge light above Tim Cook, which is giving the fill light to the whole scene from above. So here we have another shot in the basement, here you can see the techno crane in action, here we have the teleprompter, the Anton Bauer battery, huge teleprompter on the front, and a ton of light from above. We actually don't see the lights that are lighting his face, but I think somewhere here we also do have a lot of lights as well. So the next shot is using the DJI Ronin 2 right here on a dolly and right here we have the wireless video transmission system so they can see the shot and it's actually shooting the first shot of this event, uh, Tim Cook walking uh, out of the camera, away from the camera. So here we can see the DJI Ronin 2 and the same rig. The next shot is the video village, so here we can see the graded image with the lot applied, here we can see the log image and one more monitor right here. In the next shot we can see once again the teleprompter, the wireless video transmission system and the Anton Bauer battery. I don't think that the iPhone does need the Anton Bauer battery to get power, but it is needed to properly balance the gimbal because it has to be a bit of a heavier setup than 200 grams from the iPhone itself. So here we have a lot of people and the huge set uh, going on as, as the backstage. Here we have like 20 or 30 people, four airy sky panels with the grid, so we don't have a lot of spill from this light. Tim Cook is obviously reading from the teleprompter and they are using the techno crane to get the smoothest shot possible. So here we have another shot with a teleprompter and you can see how big of a text we have right here. In the next shot, it's actually more or less the same, they're preparing it to shoot in front of a screen right here. So this one is important and interesting. Here we have a custom FPV drone, which is using the DJI RS3 uh, top portion of the gimbal, also the Beast Grip cage and the iPhone, SSD, and they're sending the signal wirelessly to the video village, which is right here. And what's interesting is the ISO they were using because it was pitch black like night time. Uh, here we have the drone 
from the other angle. And here we have the ISO, which is around 500 something. So they are not afraid to use the main camera sensor with f1.8 aperture and 500 ISO, which is a lot for a smartphone. But as you saw, the results were really astonishing. And they are sending the live feed from the drone, from the FPV drone to the video village, which is cool. So here we have another shot indoors. And here you can see that the ISO is 55, which is the lowest possible ISO. And uh, the main camera is being used 2997 FPS, basically 30 FPS, f1.8. And the shutter angle is 180 degrees or basically 1 over 60th shutter speed. So the next shot is the SSDs and the backups and all that. And in the next shot, we see that it is shot with Apple Log, of course, because it doesn't have gross over sharpening, tone bamping, and overall, the image does look a ton better after color grading than the stock camera app. I have a separate video right here comparing the stock camera app without log and with log, so you can check it out after this video. So here we have the video village once again, and the next shot is showing us the Nucleus Nano Wireless Follow Focus system, which is now supported by the Blackmagic camera app. And you can see that they're basically manually uh, adjusting the focus on the iPhone itself, which is cool. And right here we can also see that the ISO is 425 or 475, so they are not afraid to use the higher ISO values, no matter that they have a ton of light available. And actually, I was receiving some questions and comments for my video about product shootout with the iPhone 15 Pro Max at my kitchen. So I shot a product commercial, which I'm showing you right now, and I used quite a lot of lights. They are not super expensive, but a lot of comments were saying, come on, you were using a ton of expensive lights at your home. Of course, uh, it's shot with the iPhone, but not everyone is having like uh, a ton of lights at home. And it was super good color grading and a lot of effects. But what do you expect, guys? Those small cameras like the iPhone 15 Pro Max or the Sony FX3 in the creator $80 million movie, they are used as a simply tool so they need to be lit properly. I mean, the scenes, they need to be lit properly. Uh, so the color grading, the VFX department and all that, it has to be top notch to use such cameras. And in 2023, I think that it's more than enough to use cheaper cameras, but having great lighting department, great crew and VFX, and you'll be getting amazing results. So if you do have an iPhone 15 Pro or Pro Max and you can shoot in log, just add lights, just be creative. Think of the composition and all that, and you'll get amazing results. As you can see right here, this shot is not really distinguishable from a regular shot that I shoot with the mirrorless camera, which is much more expensive and has a ton more space in terms of the sensor. It's a bigger sensor, simply. So guys, please, if you see a video from me shot on the iPhone, don't text me that I'm not using the iPhone as is with shitty lighting, like the regular lights in my house. I will be using better lights to achieve much better results. So if you did enjoy this video, guys, please let me know down in the comment section below and don't forget to smash the like and subscribe buttons and the notifications bell. See you in this video, guys, about Apple Log versus Standard Camera App. Take care. Bye.